Oh, top of the morning to you, lassies. It's the St. Patty Day's edition of the Real Sports Rundown. Let the madness begin, y'all. the show where there's so much to be gained, get ready to be educated and entertained. When it comes to sports, there's no fooling around, here's Ryan with his real sports rundown. All right, man, that was my Irish impersonation, man. It wasn't really that good, but hey, you know, I'm not Irish, man. I'm Italian. But, uh, you know, I did the best I could, man. St. Patty's Day was last night. Man, enjoyed it. Wearing the green, supporting it here today. Man, last night was fun and crazy with good friends, good times, man. You can't pass it up, man. You got to love St. Patrick's Day because everybody's Irish, man, and everybody likes to drink. All right, so hopefully everybody was safe. Now moving on, it's time to get some sports topics, man. And before we get to the madness that has been going on today, we're going to get into some boxing first. Oh, Manny Pacquiao beat Claudie just like I said he would. And once again, nobody really cared. I didn't hear all that much about it because guess what? Nobody wanted to see that fight. Everybody still wants to see Pacquiao versus Mayweather. And we're still not going to see that fight. Like I said, I'll believe it when those two are in the ring and the bell goes ding. Okay, I don't give a crap, you know, because apparently, you know, Mayweather agreed, and then Pacquiao agreed, and then all the hoopla and drama happened, and the fight never happened. So, like I said, I will believe it when I see it with my own two eyes. So, once again, Pacquiao wins. Good for him. Hopefully, Mayweather wins, and then we can finally get this fight to really happen. That's what I'm really hoping for here. But, you know, like I said, I'm not going to hold my breath about it. So, enough of the boxing now. It's time to get to the madness that's been going on here today, man. The March Madness Tournament got started this afternoon. And you want to talk about some mid-majors, man. Put some scare into the big Goliaths of the power conferences. Man, oh, man. Sam Houston State rival of mine. Okay, I went to SFA, Stephen F. Austin, that is a rival of ours. They put a scare into Baylor, man. Let me tell you, Sam Houston is no joke, man. They played one hell of a game. Baylor pulled through, though. But the biggest shocker of all was Murray State beating Vanderbilt, man. That was a great game all around. Final second, buzzer beater to beat Vandy, man. You cannot beat it. That's why they call it madness, man. You cannot predict anything in the tournament, man. And luckily for me, I picked Murray State to beat Vanderbilt, so hey, there you go. I also picked Old Dominion to beat Notre Dame. That happened as well. See, Notre Dame, powerhouse, Old Dominion, you can't sleep on the mid-majors, folks. They will take you down and tear you apart. And even Villanova got a scare from Robert Morris, uh, Robert Morrison, whatever they, I think it was that the name of the team. But uh, they got a scare from them today, because Villanova, man, I thought they were going to lose that game, and don't be wrong, they're a good team, but me and my brother talked about this. They're a little bit overrated, though. All right, they're not that good. Scotty Reynolds, great basketball player, and this kid had a lot of points, but he was only like 2 of 15 from the field. All of his points came from the free throw line, so there it goes to show you free throws will win you basketball games, even though you probably shouldn't have won them. So Villanova scraped by by the skin of their teeth. They're not going to advance past the Sweet 16 in my bracket, because actually my bracket has the championship game. Actually, this is my final. Final four. You got Kansas and Syracuse in the final four in my bracket, along with Kentucky and Baylor. That's right. I got Baylor making it to the final four. I'm gonna hope. I'm hoping they actually do that, man, because that would I think be the biggest bracket buster ever. Keep an eye out on Baylor. Watch Kansas State though, too, man. Kansas State. Not a lot of people giving them respect either. They're gonna be a good team. But that's the thing about college basketball, man. Everybody this year, there's not one or two teams where you look at saying, okay, one of those two are gonna make it to the championship game and win. Everybody's good. It's an equal playing field, in my opinion, and that's the way it's going to be, and that's how it's going to go. And, of course, the, the champion's going to be the Syracuse Orange, man. I got Syracuse taking it down, winning it all, beating Kentucky. But, you know, filling out your brackets, watch out for March Madness, man, because, I mean, if, if this tournament is anything like these first games started off this afternoon and this morning, we are in for one hell of a ride, folks, so get ready for it, because March Madness, baby, it is madness. I love this time of year. All right, speaking of this time of year, man, that means the NBA playoffs are starting to, you know, filter through a little bit. We're starting to see who's going to go, who's not going to go. Uh, right now, the Charlotte Bobcats might be making it to the uh, playoffs. In the East, they just got a new owner officially today, Michael Jordan, the first player ever to be an owner of an NBA franchise. Out West, though, my Houston Rockets, eh, they're struggling as a bay. I mean, they've won the last four in a row, but they're still on the outside looking into Portland, man. They're still probably about four or five games back of that final eight spot. So uh, they're going to have to do a lot of work to get into this playoffs. Even if they don't, man, they have a good team for next year. I'm not worried about it. 
The team you got to look out for, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, Oklahoma City Thunder, Kevin Durant, great basketball player. He will get his team to scare somebody in the playoffs, so you got to be careful. But, you know, the biggest question is who's going to up in the Lakers. Right now, your, your top two teams are probably Denver and Dallas. Those are the two teams that probably have the best chance of doing it. Only problem is they're going to probably have to face each other in order to face the Lakers in the Western Finals. That's probably how it's going to have to go. Now, out east, you got the Cavs. They clinched their division. More than likely, they're going to get home field advantage or home court advantage throughout the entire playoffs and the NBA Finals if they make it that far. But a team that could upset them, just like last year, the Orlando Magic. Don't sleep past Orlando, man. Vince Carter, Vince Sanity, my Tar Heel boy. Man, getting it done for Orlando right now. Stepping up when he needs to. Dropping points. Doing a great job there. So uh, watch out for Orlando, man. Don't sleep on them either. But uh, NBA playoffs starting to come around. And, of course, you know, they'll start, I think, right around the end of April, beginning of May. And they'll end sometime in the year 2014 because that's how it feels like when it comes to NBA playoffs. They last years upon years upon years upon years. All right, folks, it's baseball season coming around to spring training, so we got to start previewing some divisions here, and we're going to stick, start off with the American League and National League East, okay? Now, out in the American League, you got the Red Sox and you got the Yankees, okay? The Yankees, defending World Series champions, you got the Red Sox, they signed John Lackey, you got the Tampa Bay Rays, man, they did okay last year, but not well enough to get in the playoff hunt or the division race like they were two years ago, so how will Tampa Bay do this year? I'm not really sure on that one. The Yankees might... I think the Yankees are still going to be good, but I think the Red Sox will be better. They got John Lackey. They're going to take down that division. Out in the National League, though, you got the Philadelphia Phillies who traded away Cliff Lee and got Roy Holiday. Uh, you know, so that... I mean, basically, all you're doing is switching two great pitchers. Roy Holiday is an outstanding pitcher, and he's going to give the NL East fits this year. I mean, the Mets, they are just in a, in a wreck. They, the Mets are horrible. The, Reds, the Mets just suck. Okay, the Mets are the worst team. They're the most overhyped team every single year, and every single year they do the usual <coughs> job, and it's always to the Phillies too, which is kind of funny. I don't, I like the Phillies too. I just don't like the Mets, man. I don't like how everybody jumps on the bandwagon when they haven't done jack crap for the last few years. Okay, everybody jumps on the bandwagon. Doesn't matter. Now the Atlanta Braves might make some noise. They got Billy Wagner as their closer. Bobby Cox is last year. Chipper Jones, man, he's dwindling down a little bit. So don't sleep on the Braves either. But the Phillies taking down that division. Stick it in baseball news, man. Ron Washington, the, uh, the skipper for the Texas Rangers, uh, got caught doing cocaine last year during the season. That's right, man. They, he tested positive for cocaine, said it only happened once. He slipped up, messed up. Then admitted that he took amphetamines back when he played baseball from 77 to 89, and he said that thing was widespread throughout baseball during that time. So, I mean, this could be a big black eye once again for Major League Baseball and all this issue. So, not something you really want to see from the Texas Rangers who just got a new um, guy on their uh, on their staff in Nolan Ryan. I mean, you got one of the greatest uh, pitchers of all time. They're going to be a good team. They're going to have a good pitching staff, especially when you got Nolan Ryan at the helm teaching the guys how to pitch. Greatest pitcher of all time, in my opinion, Nolan Ryan, man. You can't beat the guy. So, uh, we'll have to see exactly how that works out for him. All right, man, it is time for Quick Hits. We haven't done it in a while, so let's show you the logo. Let's get rid of the logo. So Andre Agassi, pre-Sampras, you know, jarring at it at a celebrity event. Apparently, Agassi in his book said Sampras was cheap, only tipped like a valet guy a dollar one time or something like that. And so they started jarring at it at a charity event for Haiti, and they started jarring at each other. Now Sampras says their relationship is awkward. I didn't even know these guys were friends to begin with. Yeah, Pete Sanders, the quiet guy who got all the titles, and you had the flamboyant Agassi who had the hair and the, the limelight and then went bald and all that other stuff. I mean, I didn't even know these guys were friends, you know. But, of course, then again, it's tennis. Who the hell cares? All right. All right, guys, that's it for the Real Sports Rundown. March Madness is, you know, it's getting crazy. Crazy March Madness stuff, guys. So we'll be talking about it more next week. Baseball on the way. Everybody have a great week. We'll see you all then. There's no fooling around here.